Amen. Good morning, everyone. Happy almost Christmas. I know you're probably watching your calendar like me, especially if you're a Christmas fan like I am, but we're a week out. Uh, if you haven't gotten your shopping done yet, this is your last call. I've done it for you. You got to get your stuff going because it's next week. And our big <laughs> news today, tonight is the gala. It's time. I know. I'm so excited. I have been excited about this all week, actually, and this morning I was excited thinking about it, and tonight is going to be so wonderful. I encourage everybody to come and bring everybody you know. We can make room. We'll pull chairs if we have to. We want everybody here. It's such a good time. It's so wonderful. The program that we have, it's, I'm hoping that it's going to touch you like it's been touching us, and the, all the things to follow that as well. We have so many things. We have Oh, it's at 5 o'clock. Thank you, Becky. It's at 5 o'clock tonight. Normally, we have Fireside at 6. This is different. It's at 5 because it's a big event. We, we need you all the time. So it's at 5, and we'll have the program. We'll have some congregational music where we'll ask you to join us. So if you need to warm up your singing voice, go ahead. This was your practice this morning. Okay, so I hope you're feeling good now. We're going to sing some songs. It's nothing crazy. I promise you know them. You probably sang them in a Christmas program many years ago. Though it's going to be such a good time. And then we'll head to the back, and we get to have fellowship. We get to have food. I don't know if you know this, but we have servers. They are not licensed servers. Don't ask them for their licenses. You're going to tell that maybe it's their first or second or maybe third year doing it. Yeah, so it's going to be great. But I can't wait to have you all here. It's going to be such a fun time. We have so many things to look forward to. It's just a wonderful time of year. And we're ending, we're ending the year. That's the other big part. We do this, and it's busy, busy, busy. You don't really have time to pause, and then, and it's 2024. Boom. It's going to be that quick. So soak it in while you can. Take in these moments. I think this morning worship was a good time to just stop and be present because it was so powerful, and I felt like we were all kind of on the same page this morning. So wonderful. So now we have my dad, Sean Milton, with the message. Thank you, uh, so much. Thank you. I heard a preacher the other day defend being a fanatic. I want people to know I am a fanatic. Uh, down here, I'm a St. Louis baseball cardinal fanatic. I used to be more so until the recent years and the general managers and all of of that, uh, but uh, goes way back probably to 50, 1956 or 58 that I got hooked on the Cardinals. But the scripture says, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So I want people to know today I am not ashamed to be called a fanatic for Jesus Christ. Call me a radical. That's all right, too. Call me a revolutionary. That's all right, too. I just want people to know that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you want to, you can call me fanatic Pastor Richard. I'll accept that title. So... God bless everyone, and Sean Middleton come and just uh, build up our hearts and full of faith and everything with the word of God. Please come, and thank you, Han. Good morning. How do you, how do you go from there? I mean, I, that's a... That's a way to get yourself going. I, the only thing that would have been better is we could all launch into it's the most wonderful time. <laughs> we should, right? Right. Why not? Why not? Good to see everybody here this morning. Just uh, part of everything going on. And um, just I, many times when I'm, you know, just me and God, wake up early like I did this morning and just have some time of reflection and we can always, and that's why, you know, Chris was talking about Sunday school, we can always dwell on problems and challenge, but if you're, if you're honest, think about how the blessings that you have, and surely good and good, goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. Why is that verse so you know, precious to many of us? 
because he's a good God. And so, yes, thank you, Richard. You're, I, I, I can't help but think, I would think of the Philly fanatic. Like, I mean, he's out there just going nuts. But it's like, if we really do believe in that God's our saved my soul and provided a way for me where there seemed to be no way, we should be excited about our what he has for us. So uh, I'm all with you. I'm with you on that, Richard. That's a wonderful thing. So, um, okay, I have a, just a couple. I thought these were kind of cute this morning. That uh, If we're going to have something to you know, add some brevity to our discussion. There was a very gracious Christian lady who was mailing an old family Bible uh, to her relative in another part of the country. The mailing person, who was in a bit of a hurry and not very patient, said, is there anything breakable in here? And the lady said, only the Ten Commandments. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. Okay. All right, pass along. Next one, I guess. Um, there, somebody has said there are two kinds of people in the world. There are those who wake up in the morning and say, good morning, Lord. And those are those who wake up in the morning and say, good Lord, it's morning. <laughs> I think that's going to go back to Sunday school a little bit too, right? So, okay. And this is, here's the last one. For those in the, um, the police officers um, uh, that we love so much. A minister parked his car in a no parking zone in a large city because he was short of time and he couldn't find space with the meter. He put a note under the windshield wiper that read, I have circled the block 10 times. If I don't park here, I'll miss my appointment. Forgive us our trespasses. Oh, trying to lean on the cop, huh? Yeah, okay, wonderful. When he returned, he found a citation on his car from the police officer with this note. I've circled this block for 10 years. If I don't give you a ticket, I'll lose my job. Lead us not into temptation. <laughs> like, don't use that on the police officer. They might know the Bible themselves. So here, there you go. How's that? So God is good uh, with everything we have going on. This morning, I... Uh, I, I know I, I've talked about this, you know, like last week even. Whether or not you could recognize it being an overt Christian uh, Christmas message, if, if you know me by now, many of my messages, I, I do this, I kind of interweave because, and it's not, it is somewhat purposeful, but many times it's simply as I'm looking at what God leads me into a pathway with, it does sort of interconnect and because there's a there's a bit of intersection and frankly if you dig into God's word enough you'll recognize this root uh, analysis so to speak of God trying to get to the heart of the matter knowing that sin which is man's ultimate failure the the failing that we were born into blame Adam and Eve blame whoever you want to blame but we're born into this life with challenge and difficulty and we're always seeking a way past that a way of escape or a way to salve our wounds and find balm for our hurting souls because we were ultimately we live this life I, mean, I live this life and what's that mean it means we have wonderful times on the mountaintop but we also have to find our way through the valley some way and i and i've i, I did like sunday school class there's a number of precepts that i kind of Chris is not here for me to touch on that there's a number of things there that you're going to find a bit of intersection and we didn't talk so it's just kind of how it works but I do want to talk to you this morning you can imagine this being thematic on the heart of Christmas so let me can I read with you just a little because the, the Christmas story is it's too good not to to delve into just a little and I so let me just give you a little I feel like I want to be Charlie Brown reading one of the peanuts and they're kind of reading a little bit from it but uh, we'll get into more detail next week but I do have a specific focus when I talk about the heart of Christmas so if you want to follow with me I'm going to be in Matthew 1 and 18 now the birth of Jesus Christ was on on this when his Mary mother was espoused to Joseph before they became they came together this is an NIV I believe she was found with child of the Holy Ghost then Joseph her husband being a just man not willing to make a public example of her was minded to put her away but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, fear not. Somebody needs to hear that, too. There's part of our soul that in the midst of our difficulty and the things we're facing that we're looking forward to that looks daunting. And yet, if you'll be honest to listen, God says, fear not. And listen to what he says to her or to him. Fear not to take unto thee Mary, your 
thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that might be fulfilled, what, which was spoken by the, of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us. Right from the very beginning, oh, I can't even read it without stopping along the way. Right from the beginning, this story was interweaved with the infused thought process that God will never leave us or forsake us. Sent his very son into the world. Okay, let me just finish this a little bit, sorry. Hard to do that. Bring forth the son, they shall, God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from a deep sleep, did as the angel Lord had bidden him. He took to him his wife, and he knew not her not till the firstborn was born, and they called his name Jesus. It's a, good, it's a good story, and it's unlike anything else out there. I mean, you can read, and you can and maybe if you're a student of great literature and works, and, and there's all kinds of amazing stories going back to Iliad and the Odyssey and all these things in antiquity, and, or more current authors, and there are stories that captivate your heart. But think about what happened in this story that the Savior, the King of the world, king of the universe came down to my level and found a way for me through the darkness in the midst of a difficult time so i uh, i'm i'm as i read through this my heart always it goes back and i can think of all these memories of listening to this word and listening to this story even as a child and i'm flooded with memories and it's hard not to think of a movie reference i always i know i'm a movie buff kind of and but <laughs> I'm, of all the Christmas vacation scenes, the one where Clark's up in the attic and he finds the projector and he starts going back through Christmas memories. And, and if, as I'm saying that, can you picture memories with your families and times that were just so special or maybe ones that just made you laugh and just your, your heart's full as you think back to some of those things. We've got some of the most wonderful times that have happened this time of year, if we're honest with ourselves. And now, can we suffer loss at this time? Of course we can. I have a dear, a dear friend, a colleague, that just found out just last week she lost her mother. I mean, and it was, she was uh, getting up in age, but yet it was still unexpected. And we could go through so much. There's so much of living life that we, we have to find a way forward through. And yet we can still look at life. Kind of in the vein that we were talking about in Sunday school is even with the, the heartache we have, look at the joy that comes through spending time and reflecting and being around those we love and love us. And yeah, I know we can, we've written, there's movies about, you can end up, Richard was talking about being, somebody can be the Scrooge out there this time of year, but it's hard not to get caught up in the, the joy, the excitement. We, were, we did rewatch Elf last night, kind of, while we were playing and having fun last night and it's like one of those staples, I feel like. Have we watched Elf this year? No, not yet. Let's see. Or Christmas Vacation. We haven't done that one yet this year either. But uh, as I'm looking through that, that excitement, that joy, it does tend to permeate so much of what we have going on, even with there being difficulties that may happen this time of year. But what's interesting to me as I'm reflecting on this and I'm preparing for this and this thought, this concept kind of came out at me full force this the heart of christmas what is that and i want to unpack that for you a little bit as we discuss but isn't it amazing that no matter what happens at this time of year everything changes the world changes so to speak um and and you could say christians that we're celebrating christmas but even those that don't isn't it amazing that even those that celebrate other religious activities and such still have something going on this time of year that there's infused with activity in a way that's kind of okay you can say okay that's that religion this religion but why are they all fixated on this time of year they can have their own time but there's something special that happens and it's all focused on the birth of this little baby that the wonder of it the awe of it we were talking last sunday night about the that we need more wonder and awe in our lives. We need to have moments that make us stop and reflect and just be inspired by something that's happened that's bigger than you and I or bigger than your concept to, to rationalize it. 
Sometimes we need moments filled with awe. Watching a little one. I don't leave me alone. Just watching a little one enjoy growing and finding his world out and experiencing things for the first time. Sometimes you need the wonder of a child. Sometimes you need the wonder of spending time with the elderly that have so much. I love that discussion we had last week, Chris, that talking about people that have so much still within them that we can learn from. We need those moments. We need the time to experience the wonder of it all. And at this time of year, what is the heart of Christmas? And I, I'm asking that rhetorical question because we're going we're gonna to talk about this a little bit. And one thing I do want to note, that when it comes to this time of year, here's one thing that I thought was so interesting, that this time of year, something changes even for the most anti-religious among us. What is that? What is that? How come somebody that says, I don't even believe in God, gets caught up in the festivity and the activity? Is it just because, well, it's Christmas time, it's Santa, it's trees, it's whatever? But you do realize, whether you realize this or not, maybe, that even going back millennia, many, many years, that in those times, read up on this, that a lot of our, what we call holidays like Easter, well, you know, Easter is right around resurrection time. We're talking about Easter bunnies and eggs and stuff. And, and we have Christmas and we have trees and Santa and whatever, but it's all also happens to be going along around this whole birth of a little one kind of thing. Well, of course, you go back in previous times and even pagan religions non-christian would create holidays around either trying to hide it so they didn't get persecuted or so read up on that that's an interesting topic that many of our non or religious practices are still based on the very thing that we're celebrating in the first place the reason for the season so to speak but no, i don't care who you are out there that may say i don't claim god as my personal savior you can't deny that something changes in the atmosphere. Something changes in people visiting the store and the busyness and the, the, the change in a giving heart rather than always a taking, maybe. The, even the, the most staunch Scrooge out there, something can help melt those stony hearts at this time of year. There's something that's changed. And what is it? I would submit to you, it's God with us god became flesh and dwelt among us of course i feel that way i i've experienced him to be my savior myself but what did he change he stepped into time and split time in half i don't care if you don't believe in god once again your clock is based on his birth <laughs> your your calendar your your calendar everything about that is and i so let's, let's go into this story just a little bit, because I want to I want to talk about some of this, maybe the heart of it, because we've got this wondrous event. And to give you a bit of backstory, recognize that at that time, the, the oppression from the Romans and the others, and if you've been watching any of the, the chosen TV show, I've been into that a little bit lately, um, they try to set up some of that. But what the one thing they did very well is most people, even if you knew the Bible, the Isaiah, the, the prophecies of the virgin will give birth and there'll be this Messiah coming. They all were hoping he was going to show up with an army of angels and a white horse and the flaming sword. And he was going to, they thought he was simply going to knock out the Romans. It's kind of like you and I living in this life and thinking, what's your nemesis today? Whatever it is, politicians, tax man, the boss or the job. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's Aunt whatever, Bertha, <laughs> whatever you think is the issue today, that's kind of the way they viewed it too. They just had hoped at that moment in time that whoever this Messiah was, if he was showing up, he was going to get the Romans out of their way and then they were going to be fine. Temporary solution to uh, you know, the problem they were facing. I mean, it's kind of what we all do today too. We do that. Of course, we want God to fix our issues right now. But what did he do? He showed up and he I love that song. It's a strange way to save the world because he showed up in a way they weren't expecting because he was ultimately trying to solve a problem they didn't recognize. He was trying to solve the brokenness of man and the failure to meet God at his level. He was providing the perfect sacrifice for them and they didn't get it. They simply wanted out of the temporary oppression they were suffering. We do that too. God, bail me out of this issue right now 
and then I'll live for you and I'll serve for you until the next issue that I need bailed out, and I'll do this again. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not knocking anybody individually. I've been there myself. God bail me out right now. But God came to set in motion things. He came to say, ultimately, it is finished like he did on the cross. A finished work that he was going to put in motion at the start of a little baby in a manger and do something special for all of mankind. So, one thing on the heart. I'm, I'm fixated on this, the heart. And Crystal talked about it in Sunday school, so it's kind of funny that she touched on something I had a few notes on. When we say the heart, and I always remember Mark Lowry, he's a, known, a pretty good comedian, he would always be like, you know, we always, we love this in movies, right? My heart, let's, my heart will go on, um, a good heart, heart of gold, your cheating heart. <laughs> I had a list of songs here. There's all kinds of songs about our heart. Why is that? And Mark Lowry, in his one of his jokings, it's like, why are we, we're referring to a physical thing, and we like to give it this big emotional, spiritual connotation, so to speak. And he's like, why don't we sing songs like, I love you with all my blood pumping muscle? Like, wouldn't have the same, I don't think you could rhyme that very well. That wouldn't, wouldn't, just wouldn't have the same ring to it, would it? Okay, so we don't talk like that. Well, what do we mean by heart? We talk about the seat of emotions, the, the, the inner part of you, the central part. And you can, I'm you know, still thinking about that. <laughs> Go up to your spouse and tell her that tonight. I love you with all my blood pumping muscle. <laughs> nah, it doesn't work. <laughs> Think about that for Valentine's Day, though. That'll come up really handy in a few months here. Just, just, just trying to help you out if I can do that. So the heart being the, the seat or of emotions, the basic, important. This is a, a bit of a um, Webster definition that I had listed here. Important, basic, fundamental essence of elements or issues of matter at hand. Because we sometimes refer to, we could say our heart, but we also say we're going to get to the heart of the matter. Right? What are we trying to do? We're trying to focus. We're trying to get down to what, where it really counts. Where I can love you with all my heart. And what do I mean by that? Because I'm, I'm giving you my all. I'm, there's a bit of surrender based in there as well. So, so what are some things that would make up, if I was going to define for you the heart of Christmas, what do you think goes into that? What would you put in that? Well, I would say one of them, and it's based in John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. So giving, giving is a huge part of the heart of Christmas. And it's what changes this time of year. And I'm not saying other times are, don't have a giving attitude. But it's not like we wake up and say, happy Groundhog Day. You know, does anybody do a cards on Groundhog's Day? I don't even think Hallmark makes them. I don't know. Maybe they do. But you're not thinking about that. But what happens this time of year? Something changes. And people, and I thought we've touched on this a little bit. I mean, Holly and I already bought one of Asher's gifts for next year when he can actually use it. <laughs> That's the joy of being a grandpa, right? Because we're already excited about it. What am I excited about? Am I excited to spend the money on it? No. The excitement is I'm already picturing his little lit up face receiving something that I was able to put a, be a part of. Why is it? It's more blessed to give than receive. Why does the Bible say that? I think some people need a true lesson in what that means to give of themselves. Give of your, not, it's, it could be stuff, but it could be time. I, I've said this for a while. Um, anybody that's suffered loss and went through a time of really great grief knows and if this helps somebody, I hope. There are so many people that are well-wishing. They want to, they're trying to come up with the right words going through the funeral line to tell you something, right? Or you've done it. You're thinking, what do I say to this person that's grieving? And you know what the reality is? You don't even need to say words. Just being there, a warm embrace, your presence is a gift. So think of that and think about what you can do for people. Be present. Your time with your little ones. Uh, I mean, with little Asher, it's like, when Asher's wanted to eat, it's like, everything's on hold. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, focus on me. <laughs> I need some time. But you know what? There's just a wonderful, just simplicity in spending some time and stopping and put the phone down and whatever. Make some time this Christmas season to give. What's another heart of Christmas? Family. Even you know, I talk, talked about Mary in Luke. I love this. I love that verse in Mary that as she's watching everything happen, that says she treasured up these things and pondered them in her heart. It gives me another goosebump to think about 
the, the time we spend and the, the things that happen around us. That, because what's the reality there, folks? You can say, uh, I don't want Cousin Eddie coming around for Christmas again. <laughs> and I don't know who it is for you, but when it comes to many of our family and our loved ones, I would just admonish you, cherish the time you have. Because next Christmas may not look like this Christmas. What do I mean? The people that you have with us may not be here tomorrow, let alone next Christmas. So what do we do? Okay, boy, they frustrate me, Sean. You don't understand. <laughs> Love the time we have because there's something special about God gave us. And I'm rem reminiscent of Richard and Gloria singing that Christmas memories song. Was it last year that they sang that song? Two years ago? Or is it? Yeah. What a wonderful song to think about. Now I'm thinking about Clark up in the attic playing the movies, and just reminiscing on some wonderful times. So spend that time this year. Do that for yourself. Give yourself that gift. I, uh, what's another heart of Christmas, if I'm keeping this step along here with my time, is humility. Jesus in Philippians 2, he talked about how he humbled himself. He humbled himself to even put on, God humbled himself to put on human flesh and walk among us. He didn't need to do that. He, he's in heaven doing everything he needs to do. I can't imagine his checklist. I think my checklist is busy. What's, what's his look like, right? He's in, God, he's in heaven. He's God. He's all things, all power, omniscient, om, omnipotent, all things. And yet he stepped out of time to make time and put on human flesh and dwelt among us and felt just like you and I feel. I always think that our God is not so removed that he doesn't understand what you and I go through. Anytime you ever feel that tendency to be like, God, you don't get it. Recognize that he does get it. He ultimately gets it better than, better than you get it, frankly, if you be honest with yourself. He gets you better than you get you. Swim on that one for a while. See, <laughs> Noodle on that a little bit. So what's my point? If we can make time. Humility is something, I like this quote. Humility is something we lose the moment we think we have it. Let me say that again. Humility is something we lose the moment we think we have it. Why are Jesus' words, red words, lots of times saying, you don't come in and puff up and then assume that God's best is available to you. It's when we have the heart of a servant that the best blessings in life come. And this time of year is one of the best. Being hospitable, you might be like Clark bringing in all those relatives and they come ring the doorbell and you think, oh no, here they come. <laughs> but a spirit of hospitableness is a wonderful blessing from the Lord, and people are, feel the blessing from you. So recognize that and do something special with it. So I, I did want, there, one other thing about the heart of Christmas, I, I had several bullets, but this is a good one. If you haven't seen, there's actually a movie by this namesake, and it was on Hallmark, Lifetime, one of those channels, and it's been a number of years out, but Matthew West even wrote a theme song for that movie called The Heart of Christmas. And it's a wonderful movie. If you haven't seen it or had a chance to, I'd encourage you. I saw it's been quite a while ago. But what I love about this movie, and think about it, it's a bit, it's one of those, the, the child comes down with difficult disease, and they don't know if they're going to make it to Christmas. So if you've seen it, I don't want to do a total spoiler alert. But what I love about this, let me just give you one little bit to this. He, they don't know if he's going to make it to Christmas, and he comes home, and it's Halloween. But they totally celebrate for Christmas because they wanted to have a Christmas that year. So they set up at Halloween for Christmas. They, we joke about Christmas in July, and they did something special. And one thing, I had a couple, I just had the lyrics to this song because I thought this was really good and appropriate because it goes to this movie. Wherever the, the chorus, of course, he's talking about the world's in a hurry this December, the malls, everything. He wishes we could slow down and remember the meaning of it all, the true meaning. And he says, wherever you are, no matter how far, come back to the heart, the heart of Christmas. Live while you can, cherish the moment, the ones that you love, make sure they know it. Oh, I, I circled that. Don't lose an opportunity this Christmas to tell someone you love them and you care about them and you miss them and you're glad they're in your life. Take that. Don't miss it, the heart of Christmas. Let's make it feel this way the way it used to be. Let's find the wonder of a child. You can see the magic all around you. Calling up a lost long friend, the embrace of family. It's great lyrics if you haven't heard that song for a while you want to google that look up matthew heart of christmas it's it's wonderful in the midst of this difficulty and, and in a challenging environment and world we find ourselves in 
I want to say this, that one of the other kind of premise to the heart of Christmas would be that Jesus, one of the things he did with the birth of that little baby is he brought hope. It's hard not to see a little one and think hopeful. Think, I mean, I, I've said it before. I don't mind telling you that uh, my, my daily prayers are not only for my family and for my, my future son-in-laws and for my, of course, my daughters and my wife and everybody else, this church family, the people that I have authority over and, and with that I've been entrusted with that where I work with, that everybody that comes under what I feel like are my protective auspices, I don't know what you want to say that there, is I'm praying for everything that is hope-filled for them, but especially, I mean, I'm thinking of my grandson, I'm looking into his eyes, and I'm already praying, Lord, look at, there's so much hope, but it, and I know it's a little one, but in every one of our lives, God looks at us and sees hope, sees your you say future, like, well, I'm already grown up. I'm like, I'm not a kid anymore. Wherever you are, you still, whatever you're going to, I mean, people still joke at, joke around me, our ages, and they'll say, what are you going to be when you grow up? And I've heard people make that comment even to me now, and you think, well, I'm grown up. Like, but God's not done with me yet. He hasn't finished writing my story. Who knows where God's going to take me for the rest of my days? If I have more time and breath, and I woke up this morning, then God ex has an expectation. It's the parable of the talents. It's, God has an expectation for you and I to do something with what he's given us, which is life and breath. Bloom where you're planted and make the world a better place. And this Christmas, recognize what that heart is. That heart that Jesus brings, the wonder of a child, and change the world and set something in motion that set the world free from itself, from its own darkness and depravity. And so, what I liked best about, and I'm just a, a bit here, I had pulled up the Isaiah, which is the foreshadow of the Messiah coming. And I liked what it said is the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. And, and Isaiah saw it prophetically, this coming of the Messiah that was going to set things in motion. It may not be the way the world thought it was going to happen. In our wisdom, we can dream up. We do it now, don't we? God... Here's my problem. I already know how you need to fix it. So let's just get on board and follow my lead and all of us will be good. Are we good? Check. Off my list. I go on my way. God, where are you? You didn't fix it the way I wanted. Where'd you go? Well, he's been there the whole time. <laughs> he didn't leave or forsake you because we had different thoughts on how things should be fixed. But the point is that hope, that blessed, restorative, purposeful hope that he gives and he talked about there in Isaiah, gives us something special. And, and I, I made this note too. Life is going to be full of distractions, right? Get into this time of year. You may be thinking about the gatherings and the food you got to fix and is the house clean and, or, I'm, or going over or all those things that are going to compete, compete for your attention. But remembering the promise of what he did, what he said he was going to do, and then showing up personally and being there a part of everything that we had and wanted it's part of, it's why not only is hope a big part of this time of year but we talk a lot about peace the peace that passes all understanding and we all feel like our anxious minds our struggling minds our cluttered minds that we all want a healthy dose of, dose of peace and how better to grab a hold of something like that than to recognize God's effort to restore himself to mankind started with this little baby in the manger. The whole thing, the whole premise started with that. And so one thing that I did want to note, and this is kind of maybe my, one of my last premise here pieces, because I had so much. This, what he did when he stepped down and stepped onto the earth here with us, he was seeking to reconcile us back to himself. He was seeking to change things. And what I thought was so interesting this time of your the peace is he came in and so back to my original premise of how come things are so much different this time of year even for those that don't believe in god right why is it better different we know there's a really simple scripture and there's many that back this up about god inhabits his praises of his people right is it any wonder now let just let this one just kind of blew my mind when i thought about this because there's something different this time of year no one can deny that 
But isn't it any wonder that we spend so much time focused on him and the perfect gift of his son and his redemptive work on the cross that was foreshadowed through this effort? And we spend all this time with God, praising him, singing the Christmas songs, which is just all about his goodness and the peace he brings and being our wonderful counselor, all these things. Is it any wonder if God inhabits his praises that this time of year is just different? And you know what it makes me think on and reflect on? Why do we only have to have one time of the year to do this? Even the Bible says, if you quit praising, the rocks are going to take our place, folks. And if we don't spend time acknowledging that the true heart of Christmas is this Savior that came wrapped in baby clothes, baby skin and new smells and everything about that and the wonder of a child, and he changed everything for us. He put... He reconciled us back to himself by providing this. So what are some things, what two things I can leave you with? John 14 said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14 and Philippians 4. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. If I could give you anything this morning to, to leave you with is think about the peace of God which transcends your ability to comprehend it. It wrapped up in this little baby in the manger provides us a way. What can I encourage you with? You want to have more of the heart of Christmas? Praise his name. Follow him and give honor to the one that made a way for us and where there seemed to be no way. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness this morning. Lord, I just thank you. You've been a most gracious, wonderful God, king of the universe, king of all things. And yet you, you came down to us to walk with us and among us and, and feel what we feel and acknowledge who we are in order to reconcile us back to yourself. The heart of Christmas truly is you where you've made peace with us to you and found us wanting but yet filled that peace of us that's been missing all along. We just thank you for your goodness here today. Give us this blessed hope that we continue to hold on to you with. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.